Okie dokie, welcome to a new layout of Faith Friday, you guys. We are so excited. We've been trying to figure this out um, on how to stream um, here on YouTube and Facebook and IGTV. And here we are with Zoom. <laughs> Let's go back. Let's tell them the truth. Let's tell them what happened. What happened? We did this whole thing. And oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, let's be honest. We this is our second round. Okay. Yeah. Um, we met us though. That that would be something the three of us would do. Yeah. This, 100. Yeah. This is a uh, second time because the first round um, I hit record but no video. So I didn't have the settings. So I double checked that tonight and we are ready to record and share our Faith Friday with you. So we have a guest, and please welcome our dear sister and best friend, uh, Morgan Mills. Thanks for having me on, guys. For the Morgan, second time. I'm excited. <laughs> for the second We're time. We're so excited to have you on for a second time. <laughs> um, we would love for you to share with our audience a little bit about who you are to us and we've actually had a really special journey the three of us and the way we met and the things that have happened along the way so we'd love for those of them who don't know you to kind of know a little bit more about you yeah I feel like I can talk for hours about this I'm going to try to do the cliff notes version but we met I feel like nine years ago at uh, the world turkey hunting championship and I was working it and you guys came, they came, they were the only all female sponsor group out of 50 teams and it was just them two. They had the third back out and uh, I always have my camo with me. So I joined them and um, we just really connected in Lucene, Kansas, Wicked Outfitters there. And, and um, I just feel like with certain people, I think a lot of the viewers understand this it's like you meet certain people and you're just cut from the same cloth and I felt that way immediately with you guys and um so since then we have traveled the world as friends and as um you guys have, have brought me on as a guest host for the tv show uh Universal Hunters and Girls with Guns tv and we've gone to many of countries together and we got to witness to to many of different countries and experience their culture and um and just get really close as um you know business partners and best friends and uh you guys i sing the theme song for your tv show and so i wrote that and you you um jen had asked me who i wanted or I had asked Jen and Nerissa who I wanted, who they wanted to have on the, the song because I'm in Nashville and, and somewhat connected in Nashville. And they said, this guy, Colt Ford. And Jen just loved Colt Ford. <laughs> and I, was, I, at the time, I was like, I had no idea who he was. I was like, not in the... And that was so the, crazy to me that you didn't know who he was because I was like... No. <laughs> at the time, I felt like he had like a cult following. Like he wasn't so mainstream. Yeah. And, um, but I'm so glad that you introduced me to him in that way to the point that I got back to Nashville and I called up his people and I was like, I want to know this guy more. And is he interested in, in doing the theme song of the TV show with me for, uh, for Jen and Narissa and his whole team and him, they were just all so gracious. And they're like, we love what you girls are doing. We love the mission. We love you girls. And we are on board. So Colt Ford, if you listen to the song, Let's Ride, um, me and a co-writer wrote most of it, but Colt Ford's verse, I sent him the song and he sent me back uh, what he wrote. So that was all him. And, and uh, we've been, all of us have been good friends with him since then. So that was a really cool blessing. And that song is a, a story in itself. It went on, it was just supposed to be a, a theme song for the TV show. And it went on to be on Sirius XM the highway for a good part of a year, which is not normal. <laughs> it's because of, you know, all of our followers and friends and fans across the world just kept requesting it and, and gave, and gave it life. And so that was a really cool, a cool 
moment in my career as well. So after so many years, I feel like I've known you. It's only been nine, but I feel like I've known you guys forever. <laughs> I'm going to go back to that song because a lot of where that song was written, I mean, we were traveling mm. through Zimbabwe and um, just some really cool experiences um, that probably what didn't make it to the TV show was yeah. there was a sunset and we were sitting in this creek bed and um, some of the locals came out and we were dancing and singing with them to Lion King and um, and we were driving out and on a safari rig and um, some of the kids kept running up asking for something and we were all like, what are they asking for? And um, they were asking for water bottles and we were instantly went on like, oh my gosh, why did they want water bottles? And they wanted them to fill them in the creek beds um, for drinking water. And it was just like, we were all, all of us instantly, immediately started throwing out water bottles because we're like, give us more, give us more. But you were in that creek bed being dry and the one kid came and he dug down about a foot and then all this sandy water came up and they were excited about sandy water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no way like any yeah. of us would ever drink that. No. Mm -mm. Just, was, I mean, those experiences that we all shared um, out in the field and just being able to not only travel abroad and hunt and be able to donate meat back, but also to give back in different ways, all was like originated in the song, um, Let's Ride. So it's just very spiritual and powerful to us because it was our theme song, but um, you know. It's still my theme song. Yeah, it's still my <laughs> theme song too, it is. Uh, but it's just a, it, the, the lyrics and all that stuff. It's just us country girls, you know, doing our thing. And I, I think it holds true to, you know, it's a timeless theme in the sense of, you know, it ain't about where you end in life. It's all about how you live the ride. Yeah. And that's the, the biggest theme of that song. And isn't that such a big theme in life? It's not, it's not the finish line. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the every day and the moments, the in-between that matters the most so yeah like you said Jen that's that theme song is gonna keep rocking the rest of my life for sure yeah, yeah you guys can find that on iTunes plug we should, we should <laughs> drop a link for sure because we did record our very first music video don't judge us we were not music video people but hey I thought we did a pretty good job yeah. we had fun we had yeah. a good time. So, okay, Morgan. So what have you been doing during this time off? Because this is all, you know, we've had a lot of time and this is where the beauty of faith Friday came in. Um, for Jen and yeah. I, we just, um, we've always talked about doing like talk shows and like podcasts and all sorts of stuff, but we've never had the time to do that. And you know, our faith is really big and um, you know, we just wanted to share that with you guys. Why not? Now's the time, yeah. right? And so what have you been doing during this time off? And, you know, just share a little bit about that with us. Yeah. You know, I was so scared in the beginning of this whole thing, just like I think most people were and, and some still might be, but, you know, it hasn't been great. Um, financially there's just been a lot of, of, of bad things that have come with it i am so lucky that i have my health and i do not have coronavirus and haven't had it and um but i just honestly for me it's been a gift because my life is just has been one thing right after the other i live in a constant state of go 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 and you know i know you guys do jen you're a mom and a businesswoman Nur, you are an auntie and a businesswoman doing multiple things and multiple ventures. And, and I think everybody is just so swamped. And if you are an entrepreneur, if you have an entrepreneurial spirit, you just can't help but to want to be productive and be an achiever and go, 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 go and, 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 and get the world. Right. And so with that mentality, um, it sounds like, like a great mentality. It sounds like a winner mentality, but 
what this downtime has really taught me is that I was focusing a lot on um, financial and, and career gain and not so much taking care of myself physically, mentally, emotionally. I was clocking in spiritually and I felt like I was close to God then, but with all this time spent in the word and praying and meditating, I'm, I feel like I'm, I've drawn closer to God. I've been running and let me put a disclaimer on that. <laughs> Home girl, do not run. I, it's been what, Nur, a month? A yeah. month <laughs> since I've been doing this? It's been a month and I couldn't even go, y'all, I couldn't even go 30 seconds without oh, my heart beating out of my chest. <laughs> I could just see you. <laughs> I was like, I can't do it. I'm about to die. And it was just like, you know what? There's no gyms open. You got the free time. You yeah. have healthy lungs. And some people don't right now. Yeah. Get your butt outside. And so I did. And, and you know, I'd spend, okay, I'm going to spend an hour outside. And sometimes most of that was walking. It'd be like a 17-minute mile. <laughs> like, okay, that's a little ridiculous. But then it just kept... Every time I was like, I'm going to run a little bit more. I'm going to run a little bit more. And all of a sudden, you know, I just text uh, Narissa a picture of my like 12 minute mile. I was, I'm doing three miles at a time now. That's and amazing. that's not, it's, it's, it's still not easy. I still don't look forward to going outside. I hate it every time. <laughs> that's, because, that's because we're not Narissa because I'm with you. I'm on the Morgie train. I do. <laughs> I lay here a little. I don't even, I mean, <laughs> been a little bit down because uh, running through this whole, you know, pandemic has actually been very um, healing for me. And I have had a little bit of anxiety with just everything going on. And it was just a way that I could just connect, just have yeah. some downtime, quiet time, connect with the Lord run, listen to a great podcast and yeah. my knee. I do something to my knee this week. So mm. I haven't been able to run in four days, but I'm not, I'm like you, Morgan. I just go at a really slow pace and just be outside and enjoy, you know, nature. So yeah, I get it. I love that you guys do that. I have this tricycle with this little <laughs> pop-up stand and I put Olivia with her big old umbrella hat and her baby Cheetos, we call them. They're healthy. They're healthy. <laughs> she does. And care. it is two wheel drive, but my driveway is four wheel drive. Yeah. And I literally, it's a radio flyer, and I push her. And if you could see it, I'm just like this. But she <laughs> loves it so much that I just keep walking, and we walk a mile, and it takes us like it's 20 a minutes. ride. Right. And she loves it. And then we go to back to the chickens in the garden, and actually, Nerissa said um, that I was looking kind of tan. I was like, I'm in my garden. And but at least I'm, I, I always get outside of 18 acres. And that's for me the same. I may not get, to, may not want to go on a run. <laughs> just to be, being outside and just going on walks with her. I mean, I yeah. love it. It's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I think, but, it isn't that the, the beautiful part of this whole thing is that it's, it's forced us to slow down. Oh. and appreciate the little things that we were taking for granted before. And I just think, I, I think we all are glass half, half full people. Um, so we can't help but look at it like that. But, but really, I think it, it's really been a blessing. Yeah. Sounds like it, it's been a blessing in my life, and it sounds like it's been a blessing yeah. in y'all's life. And that's not to say that we haven't lost. There's been loss. Don't get it wrong, people. This is not like, we're so blessed, and we have all this free time. Like, I have had extreme losses and my girls here can vouch for them. Like I have had some big issues and some big negative things in my life, but you know what? This time to really connect with the Lord, I think mainly for me has been what's brought me through it and what's made me, I guess, look at it so positively. Yeah, I agree. I think, um, or, at, you know, for, for me, it's just surrendering, um, a lot of that mm -hmm. anxiety and, um, worry and of the unknown. I know that it's hard sometimes to, you know, for us women that are just so control of things, <laughs> this is out of my control. And, um, once I surrendered that and said, Hey Lord, would you just walk with me? 
just walk with me, guide me, mm-hmm. um, help ease that anxiety that I'm experiencing. And mm-hmm. once I surrendered that over, um, it's been gone. It's been great. And I've been feeling it. And we just take it one day at a time. It's all we can do, right? We just take yeah. this journey one day at a time and um, pray through it and pray for those who can't right now that are sick and going through stuff. So we try to pray for all of that. So yeah. Yeah. All right. I think the long, I can't remember when it was, I think a long time ago, I think it was like at a Christian camp when I was younger, I wrote on a, on a rock let go and let God. Mm. And I have always seen that and I've taken it and I've kind of just put it on post-its or I've put it on my computer. Put, it's just a simple reminder because it's like so easy. It's so simple. We should remember it, but how often do we forget to actually do that? To yeah. let it all go. Yeah. Let, let it go. Let it go. You know? let it go. It's easy. It's, it's easier said than done sometimes, but we're all a work in progress, right? Amen. Amen. So, um, so this whole, you know, the faith Fridays, we love to share just a little bit about our faith and, um, the three of us, when we get together, we're always, um, we didn't always grow. Like we weren't at the beginning of our friendship, but we knew God had a plan now seeing it today where we are today. And, um, it's just always fun to have those friends that if something's, you know, if you have a hard time or, you know, it's just not a good week, we have each other to where we can lean on and just say, Hey, I'm not having a good day. Um, could we pray? And so that's the beauty of where we've grown. I think Jen, when we first recorded, you said something and uh, maybe you can share that again, just about, you know, where we are today with, praying and remember we were at shot show (laughs) oh yeah and you know I think that one of the things is is that for me Mm -hmm. the women that we were nine years ago when we met are not the same three women that are sitting here today as friends Mm, no Um, our friendship looks different our lives definitely look different (laughs) um our faith is different and Mm. Yeah. I've, been, I've been saved since I was nine years old. And um, I know that it's something where I feel like there's a difference between being saved and walking with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And my choice mm-hmm. over these last three or four years has been to walk with Jesus. And that wasn't something that I could really just go out in public and say before or feel comfortable mm-hmm. saying because it made me uncomfortable. I didn't have friends who really truly understand it. I know you guys did, but you know, I'm to the point now where it's okay. It doesn't matter because that's who I am and that's where my faith is. And, um, so I, you know, I spend as much time as I can can in the word. Um, I'm not perfect. Um, make a lot of mistakes on the daily. (laughs) I feel like I'm a lot better than I was than I used to be. So where I was nine years ago and the transition, and I see that in you guys too. I see like this shift in our um, friendship um, with um, Jesus as the center of it. And I think that's huge. Um, You know, we did. I love Morgan's got to tell the story about us praying because she came in on that at SHOT Show. Yeah. Oh, well, Narissa, Jen, and I, years ago, I think it was at the Well Armed Woman Conference, or maybe it was before we were going to Africa the first time. I can't even remember. I, I think it was. We were going to Africa the first time, and we called Grandma, oh. Grandpa. Hey, grandma. Jen, Grandma, and Grandpa to, to pray um, over us and, and with us. And that was at pretty much the beginning of our, our friendship, and we've kind of they carried that. Us for every flight. So it was kind of my yeah. comfort when my grandma was alive was, to call her and um, Narissa had a lot of fear. I'm telling you on you right now. Narissa had a lot of fear with flying at the time. Neymar, do this girl, get on a plane and pass out. But at that time, so we would always pray. And I remember you being included in that. We were headed to maybe South Africa for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I think it was. And since then, we we pray on hotel beds. We, We get together and whenever we're together, we make sure we pray, you know, at least one time normally it's multiple times but the most recent memory that Jen was just talking about was at SHOT Show 2020 in January and we were going to record a podcast in the Buck Knives booth which is on the main floor and there's tons of people zooming by and I I see the girls over to the side a little bit 
still in broad daylight right there in the middle of the sermon floor and they had a new friend with them and I said, Hey Morgie, you know, she's just going through something right now. Do you mind if if we just say a prayer, three of us just pray over her? I'm like, do I mind? Let's go. What was made <laughs> for this? Let's do it. But it was just I'm sure our eyes were closed and and the Holy Spirit just fell up in the sands convention center. I'm sure people walking by like what is happening over there? Are they praying? Um, and at this point, like there's no shame in any of our game. Like we are proud about it. And we hope that, you know, it inspired someone to no matter where you are, what you're going through, it's okay to just drop down and pray. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We love having that. So if you guys need some prayer, you know where to find the three of us because we love to um, pray for some people. And, you know, you guys can comment below if you're just like, hey, you know, this 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 past month has been really hard. Um, mm -hmm. Don't be shy to reach out and comment below because we will definitely, the three of us will take the time. And even our team, GWG, at, back at the office, they love to pray. So, um, feel free to do that and let us be part of your life. So, okay, Morgie, last thing that we really want, um, okay. <laughs> what has God been speaking to you through this whole thing? Um, do you have mm. any favorite verses or, um, stuff that you've been, um, reading all this time? Yeah, girl, funny you should ask. <laughs> I have got I have got a word for y'all and I um, was reading, my mom gave me this book. It's Praying the Promises of the Bible. It's just like a prayer journal by Donna Maltese. I'll show you guys. I don't even know where she got it, but um, you know, I'll find it and link it. But what's really cool about it is in the content, like sometimes the Bible can be so overwhelming if you're feeling a certain way and you're just like, can't remember what verse it is that you need to read to get you through that moment. And this table of contents is so cool because it has like start from A, adversity, anger, breakthroughs, all the way down to grief, health, hope, you know. So whatever you're feeling, you can kind of just go to the table of contents, like give me the word on that right now. And um, of course, during, you know, this pandemic, the, the word that's been on the forefront of my mind, and I'm sure everybody's fear. Mm. And I, I turned to fear of having anxiety that day. And I just said, you know, I'm going to turn to fear. And it gives you a little, like a little excerpt. And then it gives you uh, a verse to read with it. And so I kind of dove in, in there. And, and one thing that stuck out to me is in the beginning, it said, fear can trap us, keeping us from doing something God has called us to do. We may never totally eliminate this kind of fear, but we can alleviate it with God's word. God's promises to lift us higher, change our focus from fear to courage, to face any foe. And I love that juxtaposition there where it's like, yeah. we're not going to eliminate this. This is not going away. Any of our fear, Corona isn't going away right now. You know, our, our livelihood, our normal, that's, it's not happening right now. We can't eliminate it, but we can alleviate the stress and anxiety on our own hearts, you know, by turning to him. And immediately reading that, I was like, okay, I'm sold. What else you got? What else you got for me in here? <laughs> I love this. It is, this is around Psalm 91, which I pulled up for you guys. But I'm just going to read this little excerpt. Um, it just like gave me life. Yeah. So uh, I am ruled by fear, good Lord. Fear of death, war, shootings, poverty, disease. I'm going to add virus, the corona. The list goes on and on. Help me to rest in you, to hide in your arms, to keep in mind that you have all the angels around me, protecting me, keeping, keeping me from losing my grip. You will defend me from every evil. Help me to find a way through whatever crisis comes my way. In your arms, I remain unharmed, loved, and taken to a higher place. Oh, what a feeling. Oh, what a Lord. And that was just like so powerful to me. And, and I pulled up Psalm 91 and Psalm 91 is super short and to the point. And I, I just, I recommend all of you just take a second to even just pull it up on your phone, Google Psalm 91 and get it in a translation that makes sense to you and read the whole thing. Uh, read the whole thing. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you guys, but one thing did stick out to me. Um, and that is, 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna read into it. It says, "Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from deadly pestilence." And I was like, "What's that pestilence word?" I didn't even know what that was. So I Googled it, and the Webster Dictionary: pestilence is a contagious or infectious epidemic disease that is virulent and devastating. Virulent is harmful and devastating. Does that not sound familiar? Wow. Yeah. I mean, it was like I was like you know, this isn't the first time this has happened. And, and sadly, it's probably not going to be the last. Mm -hmm. But he said that he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you will find refuge and his faithfulness will be your shield. And then at the end, they will call on me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will deliver them and honor them. And that whole, the whole Psalm 91 just put me at ease. I was like, he's just promised us right here that he's taken us through it and that he's got this and we just need to let it go and give it to him. Yeah. And that if we pray, if we have that genuine faith, which is an action, me and you were talking about this, faith is not, is not just something you feel, it's something you do. It's an action. You actually have to have faith and believe that he is going before us. Yeah. And, and the other thing is I, they will call on me and I will answer them. We forget. I forget that Jesus just said, ask and you shall receive. Mm. It's that simple. Mm. We, might, we might not get it in our timing. Yeah. We might not get it the way we want, but we're going to get what we need and we're going to get the answers. And we just sometimes think it's so big. It's just like, we're so overwhelmed that we forget to ask. We mm. forget to ask for even the littlest of things yeah. or the biggest of things because they're so overwhelming. So that's my work you guys it shook me to my core and I've held on to it through this whole time when I have been feeling anxiety about this coronavirus and everything that's going on with it it's like this ain't the first time it's not gonna be the last yeah he's a bigger God than all of it and he's he's got every single one of us yeah amen it's preach that was awesome <laughs> preacher Morgan. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on fire. Right here. It. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, thanks, friend, for joining us for our first group virtual Faith Friday on Zoom. I mean, yeah. how cool is that? Morgan stayed up pretty late where she's at. It's ten o'clock. <laughs> Sorry, that's around Jen's baby schedule. Yeah. And yeah, it's and y'all really, real special because I didn't put makeup on the whole day and I did for you, so you're welcome. I wish I could put makeup <laughs> on. I'm like, uh, I realize I'm like, oh, it's hot in here. I'm red. Sorry, guys. <laughs> hey, we're at home. This is real life. It is what it is. I actually am in leggings right now. <laughs> oh, I am in running shorts and it's not cute. <laughs> All right, guys. I got, we, I got my PJs on. Yep. <laughs> All right. We love you, Gorgie. Well, you guys have a great Friday. We'll see you soon, Morgie. We love you. And uh, stay safe, everybody. Talk to stay you. Stay safe. Keep the faith. Keep the faith.